I was doing a parish mission a couple of years ago, and uh, a very proud grandfather, proud in the good sense, a very proud grandfather came to me speaking about his grandson and what a wonderful little young fella he was. And he said, you know, it was the most touching experience I've ever had when little Giovanni comes into the living room and says, Grandad, 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 can I have a pliers? And Grandad, he, he's a, he was a TV repairman, so he had all sorts of pliers. And he said, what kind of a pliers do you want? He said, a, a big pliers. Yeah, what do you want a big pliers for? I want a big pliers for pulling nails. You want a big, what, what are you pulling nails out of? And then he just said, well, I just saw poor Jesus on the cross, and I just want to take him down. I think he suffered enough. And the granddad was like, oh, my goodness, that's beautiful. It just, it just, you know, the simplicity and the beauty of the little heart of a child. You know what I mean? I've just seen Jesus on the cross, and I think he's, he's suffered enough. I want to take him down off the cross. Can I have a pliers, please? Uh, and this is, this is like this is today's gospel, you know. I bless you for the Lord of heaven and of earth for hiding these things from the learned and the clever and revealing them to mere children. And this is like we adults, we can just really complicate things. My goodness, can we make things complicated? And often like the more, the more we study or the more intelligent we get, the more kind of confidence in our own intellectual ability we become. Then we start telling God what he can and can't do and what he should and shouldn't do. And we see how then, like, theology can start to actually veer us away from God if it's not done, if it's not taught, and if it's not learned in the, in, with a spirit of childlikeness, which is basically a spirit of humility. So like, approaching God, or approaching the study of God, theology, uh, without a sense of, of, of humility is dangerous, absolutely dangerous. I mean, even like we, we see in Scripture, like Satan himself quotes Scripture to Jesus to tempt him. He quotes scripture, so he knows scripture and he uses scripture, but the fact that you know scripture and use scripture doesn't mean you're doing it in the right way uh, or with the right intention. So it's very, very interesting how, how, how in order to understand God, it's not about kind of, I don't know, um, becoming just intelligent in the worldly sense, confident in my own ability in the worldly sense, but it's about recognizing who I am before God, which is very, very small. Loved, wanted, but very, very small. We are loved into existence. We are, uh, we're, in God's eyes, worth dying for. That's what the cross is all about. But balance that with the fact that we're very, very small. We're important. I mean, the, the things that we do and say, our actions and reactions are important because they affect others. But let's not get ahead of ourselves either. It's an interesting kind of a balance that we always have to maintain, you know what I mean? To not kind of fall into this, this idea of I, I'm completely insignificant. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a tiny little speck of dust flying around on this earth, which in comparison to the size of the universe is a tiny little speck of dust flying around the sun, which we think is pretty big, but in comparison to the universe is a on fire speck of dust. And, and, that, and that's it, like, you know what I mean? So like, on the grand scheme of things, does anything matter? You know, you don't go that far either. Uh, and the, the other extreme then is to think, well, you know what I mean? We'll invent God for ourselves and we'll decide who God is and how God is and what God can do. That's making yourself God. That's the other extreme. So we're somewhere in the middle. We're, we're, we're creatures. We're, we're, we are loved by God, loved into existence. We are redeemed by him. He wants us to be in heaven with him for all eternity. And in order to get us there, he has died on a cross. So that's what we're worth. But at the same time, you're not God. And, and so this attitude of a child is just so, so important. And, and it's, kind of, it's, it's difficult, because this, by the way, a quick distinction. There's a difference between childlikeness and childishness. Childlikeness is like humility and reliance on God, where you come into the chapel, if you're childlike, you recognize that before God, I mean, I'm not here, God, to tell you what to do, so I kneel down and I reverently entrust my prayers to you, Lord, because you are God, and I trust you. Childishness is jumping up and down, stamping, going, I want it now. That's childish. I have a little niece, and um, she's entered that beautiful, endearing phase of the terrible twos, where when she says no, no means yes. So, and at times she'll just say no in case anyone might have been asking something. So she'll come into the room, she'll look around, and she'll go, no. 
we, ha we, haven't, we haven't said anything yet, but just, just, just in case, in case you're going to ask me anything, the answer is no. Which, mean, which could mean yes, by the way. So if I want more ice cream, no. Which means yes. You know. But then no with a pout is actually no. No. That's no. And then she goes, no pout, stamp, and finger point. That's a much stronger version of no. <laughs> okay? But all of her vocabulary at the moment is no. Okay? That's childish, not childlike. Okay? So childish doesn't mean be stupid. It doesn't mean turn off your reason. It doesn't mean, uh, yeah, it doesn't mean, it doesn't, doesn't mean blind faith. Right? We should use our reason and reflect on things and try to understand God's mysteries. Absolutely. We should. But never, never creating God or telling God who he is or how he can be or how he can't be. Or thinking that 2,000 years later, I now know better than Jesus. So Jesus, obviously, the poor thing, he was conditioned by his time. There were certain things Jesus didn't know. But now we're more enlightened. So we have a better understanding of, of things than Jesus did. So Jesus, thanks for your advice. We'll take it from here. But you, you, you hear that, that, that this, we won't go into it, we won't go into it, but like, I have friends studying theology, and that's the kind of thing that they can hear. You know, that Jesus got things wrong, but he learned. He learned, and that's what we should take from it, that Jesus too can learn. So therefore, so can we. You know, it's pure arrogance, sorry. God's plan is absolutely beautiful, and God, God is incredibly patient. I don't want to wreck your heads with, with too much biblical history, but you've got Abraham, who follows Isaac, who follows Jacob, who follows, follows the 12 tribes of Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel, after Jacob gets his name, Israel. He's got 12 sons, okay? So they eventually, after slavery down in Egypt, the tribes head back to the promised land. They get judges, eventually get kings, okay? First king is David, son of Jesse. That's today. Okay, so a shoot springs from the stock of Jesse. So Jesse follows David. David then continues this line of Judah, who, which eventually leads to St. Joseph and Jesus. So this is the, 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 the line. So in all of this, the, uh, Prophet Isaiah lived um, 8th and 7th century, eighth into the 7th century BC, before Christ, obviously. Uh, so seven-ish hundred years before Jesus came about, this prophecy is made. Seven hundred years. So I got, got God's plan step by step, person by person, each, each, each person involved in this plan. Uh, Jesse was the, the grandson of Boaz and Ruth, another story, but like e each person contributes to the development of God's plan. They may not have seen it as important at the time, but it was. And so it is with us. We are very important in God's plan, but don't get ahead of yourself. You are necessary, but you're not God. We, we should become God-like eventually, as in I should try to love like God, be merciful like God, serve in, like, in this self-effacing way that God empties himself. I should try to do the do like that, yes, 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 but I'm not one of the Trinity-like. So, if I'm going to be all that I can be, I do so by becoming like a child, child-like, which means humbly reliant on God. And if I do that, then I too can be part of this wonderful plan of God, which, which unfolds so patiently in time which will eventually then lead to the visible manifestation of the glory of God here on earth, the realization of God's kingdom. So we ask, Lord, that today we may choose to follow you, that today we may choose to give our lives to you, that today we may choose to do everything out of love for you. Amen.